Hello, I'm Nigel Harris and this is one of the most exciting trains I've travelled on anywhere in the world. It's the Festiniog Railway's Gravity Slate Train. Back in the day, 80 wagon slate trains, that's twice the length of this one, weighing 200 tonnes, routinely freewheeled downhill for 13 and a half miles from quarry to coast, and at 40 miles an hour. And here's your first taste of riding on an FR gravity train. On Sunday, April the 15th, 2018, we approach and pass Tanabulk Station. A dozen or so brakemen are up front, sitting on slates in loaded wagons, taking hand signal instructions from the head brakeman on the first wagon. He decides how many wagons should brake and when those brakes should be released to keep the train under control. Today's FR has around 100 braked and unbraked slate wagons of both two and three tons capacity. This is a braked two ton wagon, all of four wheeled. Some wagons were bought by the FR as a job lot locally in the early 2000s, with others added as opportunities arose. They are very crude, unsprung wagons. The three-ton capacity wagons are longer than their two-ton counterparts. We clatter noisily through Tannabulk, much to the amusement, or maybe bemusement, of visitors. Our April 2018 gravity train engages the level crossing at Penryn. I wonder what waiting motorists make of this unique spectacle of a noisy train of small wagons careering past with no locomotive. This is a gravity train in Boston Lodge's modern carriage shed. Both front wagons are three tonners. All 100 wagons have only central dumb buffers and loose hook and shackle couplings. A loaded 80 wagon train would have had three brakemen running back and forth on the loaded slate, leaping between wagons to operate the brakes. Incredibly, there are no recorded fatalities amongst men doing this dangerous job on maybe six daily downhill trains. The idea of 80 of these two and three tonners carrying maybe 200 tonnes in total running downhill at 40 miles per hour for 13 and a half mile from quarries to coast with three brakemen jumping from wagon to wagon beggars belief today. Engineering base for the gravity train is the restored old forge at Boston Lodge, previously unused and in danger of collapse. I shot these clips on my first experience of the Snowdonian in 2018. The Snowdonian is an annual all-day experience featuring 80 miles of steam haulage in both directions over all 40 miles of both Festiniog and Welsh Highland Railways between Blanau Festiniog and Carnarvon. This is the April 2022 train. Luxurious Pullman car number 150 home built by the FR at Boston Lodge, is a masterpiece of exquisite craftsmanship. Its observation end gives a great view of Hunslet 240 saddle tank Blanche at work. The 25 mile Welsh Highland Railway is relentlessly spectacular. Our two Bear Garrett articulated locomotives had just passed the summit and were coasting to the isolated station at Rid D with the April 2022 Snowdonian. Driving is General Manager Paul Lewin, helping his regular fireman Julie Sterling by working the fire doors to minimise cold air entering the firebox and taking the boiler off the boiler. This time, Fireman Julie is working the doors herself.
on Sunday, April 24th, 2022, fairly hauled trains are crossing at Minford. And this is where gravity train demonstrations usually start. FR practice, incidentally, is the opposite to conventional operating. Trains pass on the right, not the left. Network Rail's Cambrian coastline passes under the Festiniog here. The two stations are adjacent. After a safety briefing, we climb into the wagons and settle down for the up journey to Thiacht. From there, we'll be unhooked to run by gravity back to Minforth, seven and a half miles. There's a mountain sense of anticipation as we await departure. In the wagon ahead, Festiniog Welsh Highland General Manager Paul Lewin, on the right, is accompanied by Heritage Railway Association Chief Executive Steve Oates. In the distance, our fairly awaits the right away. And we're off on the seven and a half miles to Thiaith, where we'll begin our adventure proper. Not that this anti-gravity journey isn't a thrill in itself. Two wagons behind me is historian and TV presenter Tim Dunn in the flat cap. It's a glorious day and the 11 brakemen currently riding on the rear of the train are also enjoying this lovely ride. The railway's closely bordered by many houses. There's a great view of the many miles of handcrafted dry slate walls which constrain the Festiniog's often very narrow 13 and a half mile long track bed. And here's a glimpse of one of the towering dry slate retaining walls for which the Festiniog is also rightly renowned. The passing scenery is just breathtaking. It's a unique experience passing through the largely bare rock of Garneth Tunnel in the gravity train, either hauled uphill by steam or running noisily downhill by gravity. At the act, we halt on the main line, giving me this magnificent view, whilst the brakemen, now at the front, apply the handbrakes. Our fairly then detached and drew clear into a siding next to the famous spiral to await a clear road down behind us for its light engine run back to Port Maddock. Our brakemen walk the length of the train, reminding everyone to remain seated at all times and keep arms and legs inside the wagons. Remember those very narrow gaps between the slate walls. And then we're off. Largely volunteer construction of the two and a half mile deviation from the act to Tanagrisii was a massive 13 year job from 1965 to 1978, involving much navvying and blasting. It opened in June 1978. Thus, there is no longer a consistent falling gradient from Blanau to the act, where the track bed was flooded in 1957 as part of the Central Electricity Generating Board's reservoir and hydroelectric power station construction. So, gravity trains now start at the act and generally run the seven and a half miles to Minforth, with only occasional runs to Port Maddock. Horses hold loaded wagons across the cob to the wharves in working days. Empty slate wagons were also horse hauled, eight at a time, back up to Blano, 850 feet above sea level, in around six hours. Around six daily trains transported roughly 70,000 tonnes the finished roof slates a year to the sea, from Blanau's 23 quarries, all connected to the FR, mainly by inclines. The London and North Western Railway and Great Western both built lines to Blanau, the LNWR in 1879, and the Great Western four years later, in 1883, to win slate traffic. Festiniog slate wagons were built by both of the mainline companies, and the FR still operates some carrying their markings. Look above the wheels. By the 1850s, with demand for roof slates soaring, 
the Festiniog was reaching operating capacity. So, in 1862, the railway invited bids for two locomotives and in February 1863, George England of New Cross, Surrey, which built its first locomotive in 1848, won the bid. England 040's Mountaineer and Princess arrived in July 1863 and steam slate working started in October, passenger traffic following in 1865. England built four engines for the Festinia Railway. Longer trains and the faster return of empties to Blano by steam produced the urgently needed extra capacity, which was also boosted by the end of slow horse haulage of empties back to Blano. This, in turn, enabled loaded slate trains to not only become longer, but also run non-stop over the 13 and a half miles from quarries to coast. You see slate absolutely everywhere, from trackside walls of all sizes to dry slate infills of bare rock faces. This is Hlyn Mare, Mary's Lake, near Tanabul. As we rumble towards Tannabulch, the lead brakeman has both arms held out horizontally, one holding the single line token for the section we are leaving to be collected on the move in the platform, his other hand open ready to collect the new token, also on the move, for the next section. Demand for roofing slates slackened significantly from the 1920s and a gradual FR decline set in. Passenger trains continued only until the Second World War in September 1939. Slate trains continued to run three days a week, but gravity running ended. All Festiniog slate traffic ended on August 1st, 1946, after 110 years from 1836. The Festiniog Railway, incorporated by Act of Parliament in 1832, is the world's oldest independent railway company. The FR route was surveyed by James Spooner, whose consistent downhill gradient of between 1 in 80 and 1 in 100 was a work of near genius in this landscape. His name survives on the name of the restaurant at Port Maddock. Trains of less than 80 wagons had two brakemen, with 100 wagon trains requiring three. Two braked wagons led each train, with another braked wagon every six vehicles or so. Hence the need for brakemen to run on the loaded slate and jump between wagons to operate brakes. Loaded trains ran at up to 40 miles an hour, the leading brakeman warning of his approach with a hunting horn, and they still do.
No shelter was provided for the brakemen, even in the most severe winter weather. Today's speed limit is 15 miles per hour, the lead brakeman using a GPS speedometer. A very surreal overlap of technologies. If loaded, this 39 wagon demonstration train of mixed two and three ton capacity wagons would have weighed around 113 tons. And remember, loaded 80 wagon 200 tons plus trains of twice this length were routine, running at 40 miles an hour. A gravity train rolls into Minforth, where a serious accident happened in steam working days caused by human error. A loaded slate train ran away and collided with a train already standing in the platform. The FR was saved from its own Harrow and Wheelston style pileup thanks to a quick witted driver in the other platform who saw what was about to happen and smartly reversed his train out of the station and out of danger. Gravity train demonstrations started in the mid 1980s, a half century after the last loaded train ran in 1939. They run now several times a year, not merely to entertain visitors, but also to ensure that the brakemen's operating competences are properly certified. The head brakeman is always an FR driver, with other volunteer brakemen drawn from the locomotive department. There's about 18 inches of slack for each wagon because of the loose couplings. Hence, when stretched out, this 39 wagon train lengthens by more than 58 feet, nearly the length of a BR Mark I passenger carrier. In 2023, the FR Slate Train project team won the prestigious Heritage Railway Association Peter Manistee Award for excellence. Quite right too. The team is based at Boston Lodge where a £4 million Heritage Lottery Fund project is underway to tell and interpret the Slate story. In its heyday, the Festiniog operated at least 1,000, maybe even 1,500 of these slate wagons, all maintained in the oldest part of Boston Lodge Works. The FR's 100 wagon fleet still is. Today's 100 slate wagons are stored in this modern, purpose-built and very large five-road shed at Minforth, which has space for the railway's 200-strong wagon fleet, all kept under cover to keep the often wet Welsh weather at bay. Incidentally, the black van on the left is a hearse wagon. The FR really is determined to represent every aspect of its working life. I really hope you've enjoyed this Green Signals tribute to the Festiniog Railway's award-winning Gravity Slate train team, mainly volunteers whose long train is a unique UK experience. 
The FR owes its existence to Slate. The Denorwick quarries were once the world's biggest, and it is a remarkable survivor, given that the last Slate trains ran in 1946. Thankfully, the FR, like the Slate quarries themselves, was ultimately abandoned rather than dismantled, giving pioneering preservationists time to take over in 1954. The late Alan Pegler, well known for later saving flying Scotsman from the scrapman, borrowed £3,000, which is more than £100,000 today, from his father to clear the FR's debts and allow the company to be bought. Heritage trains first ran across the Cobb in 1955, with services extended to Tannabulch in 1958. After building the deviation around the new reservoir at Tanagrisii, the line to Blano Festiniog finally reopened on May 25th, 1982, reuniting the whole Festiniog railway. The railway's working hard to tell and interpret the story of Slate, an enormous industry which quite literally reshaped North Wales. The FR is determined to keep that slate story alive and the gravity train is only a part of that. Much more is to come at Boston Lodge. My thanks to Festiniog Welsh Highland Railway General Manager Paul Lewin and his team for invaluable help in making this video. Riding on the FR Gravity Train was a privilege and a real blast. I enjoyed it massively. Finally, our biggest thanks and huge respect go to the many volunteers who have restored, maintained and operate this unique train. You all do a really incredible job, so thanks to you from all of us.